Well, here we are at the Open Door Boat Shop, and we're back on our skiff project, and we've got our bottom plank in here laid out in little piles of six right here, all the way down the boat. And what we're going to do is start back after you, and we're going to apply them in groups of six at a time. Now, we've got the first six right there, but the first piece, I'm not going to put it right at the very transom. I'm going to put it about five inches ahead. Now, I'm not that good, so I've got to measure it here. And I've got it right there at five, and five on the other end, like so. And I'm just going to take a pencil and mark it right there on both sides, like that, so I can look back at those marks anytime I want. Now, I've got it hanging over the boat even on both sides, just like that, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Now, I'm going to crowd these right up against it, and I'm also going to space those so they hang over the boat on both sides equally. Just like so. And that should take care of that. Now, what I have to do is crowd them up like that and just look at my marks again and make sure it's still on the marks like so. And then I'm going to move over to the side here and I'm going to make marks vertically right above the side plank and on each one of these as I remove it like that because that's exactly where I want to put it down once I've spread the bedding compound, just like that. And I'm going to put them down from one end the next time I do it here, instead of from the transom, like so. Now, I'm going to push five of them out of the way and pull the first one back to its marks again like that. And then I'm going to take some little blocks and put them on the chines right here, like this, and just clamp them down right there. Now, the reason for that is so that I can spread mud behind this one. And uh, if I squash it down and the mud comes out and covers the line, I won't be trying to figure out where to put the thing. So this will work pretty good, just like this, to put the first one in place. Then it is going to determine where all the rest of them are going to go, like that. So now I can take this one out of the way spread a little bit of mud in there, maybe four beads. That might be just a little bit more than we need, and some of it may squeeze out. But as we get going along here, we can decide to spread a little bit less on there and uh, not waste so much, because I can't clean it up until it dries. So, you know, you just got to be getting the right amount on there so you just don't waste it. Now, basically what's going to happen here is I'm going to have to place this board by that one mark that I put on the port side because I can only stand in one position and set one end down at a time and line that mark up so I'm hanging out the bo both sides of the boat the same amount and then basically I'm going to push it up against those blocks that I clamped to the chine. Now I don't want to clamp this board down to the chine. It'll squeeze all the mud out. There's really no sense in it. It's not going to move around on us. We're going to drill one hole first and put one screw in and maybe not all the way down just to stop it from sliding and then I can drill the other holes. In order for me to drill the holes, I have to stand up kind of high because you can't be drilling with the drill out in front of you and your hands 90 degrees to your body because what's going to happen is, is you're going to bend that drill bit and you're going to break it off in there and that's no good. You'd have to take everything apart and try to figure out how to get that out. And uh, basically we're only going to countersink them down in about an eighth of an inch because they're just going to be putty, they're not plugged. So you got to get yourself in the right position, like I said, and not only to drill it, but also to fasten it. You know, to drive those screws, another thing, you have to keep that screwdriver bit in that screw. You've got to apply a massive amount of pressure and make sure you don't try to go all the way. Make sure that bit stays down in the bottom of the slot and you'll have good luck. So we've got our first plank screwed right down into position here, right where it belongs. And we're going to use that plank to clamp all the other planks right up to it. We're going to clamp five more planks up to that at a time. First thing we've got to do is just stack these planks up and get them out of our way a little bit, just like that, so that we can move around the side and spread some of this polysulfide along the chine logs here. Like that. Now, we're just going to put maybe five beads on there, maybe a little bit lighter than we did on that first plank, just so we don't waste so much of it. I don't want to have to clean that up and reuse any of that because it kind of starts going off kind of quickly. So you don't use what's squeezed out. You only use it out of the tube. So now I'm just going to grab one plank at a time and using the mock that I made on the port side here, I'm just going to place it right in position like so. Squeeze it down a little bit just on my end and go on to the next one. 
And we're going to do all five of these exactly the same way. Next one. And uh, just make sure we squeeze it down there a little bit so it doesn't move around too much. And there is number five. And we're just going to push that one down nice and tight into the mud there so it won't slide around. And then we're going to go on to number six. Now this is the last one. And then we get that one in position right there like so. And then we're going to clamp them together with some bar clamps. Now we're going to pull them right up tight to each other. We fit these planks on a joiner. They fit really nice and tight, and we don't want any space in between them whatsoever. Wood does swell and contract, but this is fur and it's quartered fur, so it doesn't swell and contract a lot. You don't want to leave any spaces. You want to crowd them right up tight. You'll get the best results that way. Now, what we're going to do is fasten the sixth plank down first, because I can see the chine log right there. I know exactly where to put the screw, but I wouldn't venture into trying to put the screws in number two, three, four, and five without some sort of reference line. And I'm not even going to tighten it. Now what I've got here is a little marking gauge that I've just made up out of a little piece of quarter inch plywood here. And it's designed so that I can put a mark right down all of these planks right here, right dead center in the middle of the chine log right here. So when I put it up on top of the plank, and it does exactly the same thing, I'm just going to start here and just sketch a little line right down through here. Now, that line's necessary because if I don't use that line, I'm good, but I can't make it happen and get the screws right down the middle of that chine log the way they belong. They'd be back and forth like that, so I need a reference mark, and there it is. Now we're going to drill two holes in each plank, one on each side of the line here, so all the screws don't line right up with each other, because this way there's less chance of splitting the chine logs like this. Now, we're going to stand up nice and tall, get our weight behind it, and drive the screws right down in there, make sure they're driven right down home. Once that's completed, I'll go over to the other side, take that same mark and gauge, mark a line down the chine exactly where we want it again, just like the other side, Drill those holes, stand up tall, and drive those screws right down in there. Once that's complete, there you go. There's the first six right there, done. Nice and tight up to each other, just the way we want it. Now, we did that with these small bar clamps, and I've got some longer bar clamps here. I'm going to put 11 more pieces down with longer bar clamps, but once I've got those 11 done, that system runs out. We're just finishing up fastening down the last of the bottom plank and that we can crowd up tightly with the bar clamps and it's worked great, but now we've come up with a new way to go about it here that's going to get us to the bow end of the boat and it's with a couple of ratchet straps and a couple of chains here. Now the ratchet straps, they really got quite a bit of power, but we also got two to one because I've got it going around under the planking and around on top of the planking. And it's not quite long enough, this particular strap, to make the length of the boat. We've got one on each side, so what I've done is I've just added a chain right here. And when I run out of length with the strap, I'm just going to lengthen the chain up and just continue. So that's the way we're doing it now. I've got a piece of electrical conduit here, right here in front of us, right here, the strap going around that piece of electrical conduit, and the same thing back aft, so it stops the strap from damaging the edge of the plank, and you can actually twist the electrical conduit to get the strap to either be tighter on the back or tighter on this side. So uh, it works out pretty good, and uh, boy, it's got some power, and it's pretty easy to set up. So I'm going to crank this right up tight, and you can get a look and see how well it works. Just like that, it stops right there. It doesn't have a fraction more to go, no matter how much pressure I put on it. That's just enough, just like that. We're going to spread our bed and compound down in there, position the plank in right in position, and put those straps right back on and crank them right up. Now we're crowding that planking up with those straps. That's the important thing. We want to crowd these planks right up tight because they're not straight. We're actually bending the planks or edge setting the planks as we crowd them up to each other. And it's important to us to get them nice and tight and this thing does the trick, especially up forward where the boat is rounded, where the bottom has got a, a roundness to it. The bar clamps wouldn't even work. These things work great, you know, and uh, 
We're working in sections here because you don't want to get too far out in front of yourself with polysulfide here, especially on a damp day, because it's hydrogen cure, and uh, the dampness in the air carries hydrogen. The damp of the day, the faster it goes off. But even when it's dry, I don't want to go too far, too fast. So I'll spread enough for maybe six or eight planks and put those in place, and then crowd those right up nice and tight. And I know I can get those fastened down before we start having any trouble with that polysulfide going off. So that's the way I do it in groups. And uh, it's worked really great. We're about a foot from the stem, and I've just pinched the ones up against the stem to pack the last few up against each other and screwed those down. And when you look at that, the bottom planking is on. We've got one plank back aft, that wider plank to put on there, and we've got this spot up forward to fill in right here. But it's basically done. And uh, we have the overhang yet to cut off, but I'm not going to do that right away because uh, we've got that wet polysulfide underneath there. I don't want to get that involved with my saw blade. So, uh, oh man, I can't keep my hands off of it. I can't wait to trim it. Yeah, it's been a lot of work, but uh, it's not so bad. And there's a little bit of work left to go, but uh, it's fun to do it. And uh, it's going to be a great boat when we're done here.